Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. Today, we're honored to have Dr. Vipul from India to give us a course. Uh, our uh, our laser course will be invited Hello, into everyone. for. Excuse me. Today. Sorry. Today, we're honored to have Dr. Vipul from India to give us a course. Oh, sorry, let's uh, continue. Uh, today, we're honored to have Dr. Vipul uh, from India to give us a laser course. Our laser course will be divided into four modules. And today, we will have the module one. Uh, so now, we'll have a brief introduction to uh, Dr. Vipul. Uh, Dr. Vipul uh, has acquired his MDS in endodontics. He has achieved advanced proficiency in laser dentistry, USA. He is also a co-educator in laser certification program in laser dentistry by University of San Francisco, California. Uh, he is also a life member of Indian Endodontic Society. Uh, he is also a life member of Indian uh, Dental Association. Uh, Dr. Vipul also has been awarded fellowship of uh, Bangladesh Academy of Dentistry. He is a certified a digital uh, smile designer. He's a certified specialist in implant dentistry from USA. He's also uh, a founder member of Academy of Laser Dentistry Affiliate India. He's uh, an appealing leader of a well-renowned company manufacturing dental products and lasers. So that's all about the introduction to Dr. Vipul. So now our lecture will have the time. Welcome Dr. Vipul. Uh Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever which part of the world you are. Thank you, Lucy, for the kind words. And I'm going to share uh, my screen like this. We will go uh, Windows presentation, share. Uh, so uh, am I audible to everyone? Hello. Lucy, am I audible? Yeah, doctor, we can hear your voice. Yeah. And uh, my slide is running okay? Uh, it is now, uh, it is not running. It is not in full screen. Please play oh, your slide. Is it full, full, full screen coming, right? Uh, it is not in full screen now. Wait. Yeah. Is it full screen now? No, please show your screen first. Uh, wait a moment. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, screen, in full screen now, in full screen now. All right. So thank you, uh, Woodpecker, for giving me an opportunity. And uh, this is a unique concept. I appreciate that they have come up with a series of the lecture, Woodpecker, so that, I mean, uh, so many uh, questions, so many Curiosity is in general dentist uh, or public mind that what is dental lasers and what about that. So it is always tough to collect and gather all the information in just one lecture. So I really appreciate the idea of having a series of lecture and uh, every week we will come and I'm open to like we will be having a question and answer session at the end of the session and I'm open to ideas uh, in between also like uh, we our next uh, lecture is scheduled on the next Monday, that is on 14th of March. So in between also, if you have any question you want to ask or any doubt, uh, please, you are most welcome to put it on the Woodpecker site or my site or Facebook or uh, you can type here also or you can email us. So let's start. Like I just told, thank you uh, again, uh, Lucy, for the kind words of introduction. But am I qualified enough to stand opposite you all? My laser credentials. So... 
uh, even though company called me an expert, but I believe I'm still a learner and I, I'm learning throughout my life. What are, uh, whatever I know, I, I just want to share my experience with the laser dentistry. And I am working with the lasers for almost 12 years now. My credential have just been mentioned by Lucy kindly, so I'm not going into the detail of these credentials. But you can see this is where I work. This is my clinic number one. Then I have another clinic practice. I'm based in Lucknow, uh, India, UP. I have another clinic, which is this. Uh, uh, it is situated at, uh, again, Lucknow. And then I have another clinic where I'm, uh, again, working with lasers, microscope, and uh, doing a lot of uh, aesthetic work also, and uh, uh, promoting laser dentistry. So these are the three clinics where I'm currently working uh, in city of Lucknow, UP, uh, India. And whoever is listening to me, they're most welcome to visit us whenever they want. So let's go on today's uh, topic. Now, this is most introduc uh, uh, most interesting topic, introduction to laser dentistry. Now, before starting on my topic, I would like to clear out that fact that we are not here to talk about lasers because it is latest in dentistry or it is a substitute of any surgery <clears throat> or conventional procedure. What I mean by that, like some confusion I want to uh, clear here. I have a heart tissue laser, let's say. So that doesn't mean I'm uh, telling you to throw your uh, rotor, throw your micro motor, throw, throw your electric motors or drill or bar. Lasers are, lasers are not mean to replace those. Same way soft tissue lasers, uh, I don't mean you to throw a scalpel. They are not substitute. They are uh, another device. They are adjunct. They can be principal. So what I mean to say, it is not a substitute of any surgery or conventional procedure, but because lasers are an adjunct which can improve your work, which can perfection your work. So we have research proven highly useful adjunctive tool for enhancing the clinical output of the procedure performed along with appreciable patient satisfaction. It is the future of dentistry among the various advances mankind has ever in dentistry. Advances in laser technology has brought a revolution in dentistry. Now what I mean by revolution in dentistry. See, uh, you, you think about, uh, you need to understand before where I keep lasers in uh, in a general practice, day-to-day -day practice. See, when we talk about, let's say, endomotor, it is focused to endodontics. When I talk about a scalar, it is focused with periodontics. When I talk about braces and aligners, it is focused with orthodontics. But laser is one tool which has got application in almost all the stream. And over this uh, period of uh, one uh, month, uh, my next four lectures, I will be trying to cover everything. So we'll go one by one, how laser has influenced our life. Since this is an introduction, so before introduction of laser in dentistry, let's, let us introduce laser in our day-to-day -day life, how laser has influenced our life. So we all know uses of laser. Uses of lasers are defined in industries. Laser have been used in military. Laser are used in computer technology. Laser are used in astronomy, microelectronics, ecology, daily life, and medicine. Medicine, even though I've written here it's first, but I will keep laser as uh, 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 medicine, laser and medicine in the last, and we will discuss about that later on. So laser in common life, how, how it has influenced. We all go to a market, we all go to supermarket, we all go to uh, your malls and all, and where we see uh, the bar, there are, uh, we buy stuff. Like we buy grocery, we buy food, we buy garments, we buy other items. And there are small black color codes are there. There, if you notice, the storekeeper or the whoever is the cashier, they have a device in their hand, which is known as barcode reader. So they are using that device of barcode readers to decode. So those barcode reader or scanner, they scan the details or information present on the barcodes and they collect the price and you can get all the information, which date they have manufactured, when they came to stock, how many uh, uh, stuffs are there in the stock, how many remaining and all. So many things you can do. So the commonest use I can uh, see right now uh, in day-to-day -day life for a common uh, uh, common people, Not I'm, I'm not talking about dentist, but I'm talking about common people. Like the most common use is the barcode reader. We all know. Then used to decode and read compact disc DVD. 
if we all are using dvd we all have used compact disc we have used laser disc and all so you know how they work there are information gathered on those discs and we use laser to read those device laser is used to read those devices and they encrypt the data uh, are there and they, they, they then they play that like if there is a movie data they play using a laser lens same way laser printer we all know lot of toys people uh, of lately they have become very popular laser shows you go to a disco clubs and all so common life uh, laser has come in almost all uh, even um, few days back i went to uh, uh, get my car serviced and there are like even for the wheel alignment balancing and all nowadays instead of old method technical method thread and all now they nowadays they are using laser uh, for uh, aligning uh, of the wheel and all those things so this is something like laser are already there present in everyday life what about army unfortunately uh, of lately world is going into a crisis um, uh, we all know what is happening in uh, the western part of the world where uh, there is fight going on and if you notice lot of those gadgets lot of those uh, 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 ammunition they are using laser guided uh, missiles laser guided rifles laser guided all other uh, equipment and all in army so laser is also uh, used in defense also a uh, very good uses how about medicine so now now uh, we'll come slowly to our topic lasers used in medicine so we all know that finally focus the beam of the laser has been used to destroy the cancerous and pre precancerous cell i will uh, talk little bit more about it so uh, laser can be used to remove carcinoma few years back if the people who are aware of lasers in uh, dentistry they must be aware of low level laser therapy by stimulation now this is a very uh, interesting uh, app, uh, uh, what you call this is a very interesting use of the laser for removal of cancerous cells few years back there was a misconception like if i use laser on a cancerous cell it can promote the growth now why that uh, problem why that question came because laser has got a power of low level laser therapy by stimulation which is said to be increase the potential increase the growth of the cell so uh, what the idea was for this misconception like which came few years back that if i'm using laser on the cancerous cell instead of cutting it can promote the uh, growth of the cancerous cells so it can increase the cancerous cells also means if i'm using a laser on uh, any malignant cells it can in increase the cell growth now uh, there are enough data and japanese have done lot of the study on that that whenever we are patient uh, we are we are doing patient uh, we are treating patient with hello i'm uh, sorry hi lucy hello I think there is some. sorry uh, we are having little bit of technical uh, issue just give me a minute we will be here okay so we we had some issue technical issue i'm really sorry uh, i think we skipped because of uh, uh, it happens time lags happens and internet sometimes it is favorable sometimes it is not so we were talking about laser in medicine and we were talking about laser used for the uh, pre cancer uh, lesion so like i was telling there has been misconception that when we are using lasers on malignant cell it can 
promote growth because of low level issue so japanese scientists they have done lot of research work and it has come uh, it has come out with the uh, research work that whenever a patient undergoing laser treatment for removal of the cells they are also in the chemotherapy and that chemotherapy is uh, good enough to suppress the uh, undesired low level laser therapy effect or low biostimulation effect of the malignancy that means lasers are absolutely safe device they don't promote cancerous cell if they are working we are working on the malignancy so that is the one doubt and i will try uh, I, i will talk in more detail on the next uh, webinar when we will discuss about myth and reality second the heat of the laser seals off capillary and lymph vessels to prevent the spread of the disease that is another use and i would like all of you if you get time please go through the internet and uh, search about laser welding tissue so lasers are also used for welding that is like you, we are removing the sutures now and we are using laser to seal off any uh, cut and suture uh, any cut if it is given instead of suture also laser as uh, laser are being used in breaking the stones of human kidney it is used in develop hidden fingerprint ophthalmy uh, ophthalmology we all know lasik surgery is very popular and it is going uh, doing wonder and we have seen tremendous excellent result same way uh, lasers are used in aesthetic also in derma for facial rejuvenation uh, people are off lately they are very conscious about the looks and also laser can be used for hair removal for derma so many applications are there in medicine interestingly uh, we have got enough application of lasers in dentistry also so let us talk about that uh before that uh, we'll go little bit of history uh, we, it is always important to know history like how this is started and how we have come up to cutting edge technology so we all know that uh, charles town in 1950 he developed the masers masers are defined as microwave amplification by stimulated emission of radiation in early 1950 In November 1957, Gordon Good analyzed Einstein's theory and described how to make a laser, a light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So this was uh, in year 1957. Gordon Good analyzed the theory, but the introduction of real laser was in 1960. In year 1960. Uh, the the third at Memon at Hughes lab produced the world's first laser and you can see uh, what how he produced the laser he has cited a ruby rod with a photographic flash lamp and you can see in the picture this this particular photograph is very important and very dear to me uh, it is the world's first ever laser whether we are talking about defense whether we are talking about normal life human life uh, in uh, medicines or in industrial uses and all this is the world's first laser which has got uh, revolution for this cutting is technology and the person who is holding he is dr donald kuluzi he is my mentor and he has been my guide for so many years for my work in the laser dentistry so you can see here uh, this is the world's first laser now world's first laser was introduced in 1960 how and when lasers started getting used in dentistry this is also a little important and uh, we should know because then only we will understand like how technology has evolved and how much time it has taken so we need to understand that first interaction of lasers into human was done in uh, this is something more about the history i'm not going into the detail let us go into the dentistry in 1965 leon goldman he was a dermatologist now leon goldman was a dermatologist he got an access to the ruby laser and he has his brother was dentist so what he did he used this laser on his dentist brother's tooth producing a painless crazing of painless crazing of the enamel means in 1965 leon goldman who was a dermatologist but he has access to a laser and his brother was a dentist what he did he used this laser on his dentist uh, brother's tooth and what he observed there was crazing of enamel painlessly so that was like first introduction but uh, since any technology before uh, coming into the normal life there is so much of research work r and d goes on so much of research so much of uh, ethical approval so much of guidelines and we need to follow so uh, laser was introduced in 1960 the first dental use was introduced in 1965 and then we started slowly gradually uh, introducing lasers but it took a lot of time so uh, interaction of the laser with in dentistry started from 
and while laser dentistry would be explored throughout the 70s and 80s it was not until it would not be until the early 90s that laser dentistry would become safe and practical so when and how it became you need to know the first dental laser which was approved to use in dentistry was around 8990 and that was ndr laser so after decade of research the proper wavelength for oral laser uh, dentistry was determined lasers were built that could remove soft tissues and enamel without damaging the underlying tissues and bone structure these lasers were used for some specialized oral treatment in the 1980s but had not hit the mainstream NDR was the first laser which was approved by uh, to be used in the dentistry it was a pulse NDR laser NDR lasers are still used in the dentistry so this is a soft tissue laser you need to understand i will talk more into the detail what is a soft tissue laser and what is a hard tissue laser before that you just need to see some more uh, interesting slides i have got so this was a soft tissue laser now in the year 1995 there is a company known as premier surati in 30 june sorry 30 june 1997 premier laser system says it has taken the, this is the first hard tissue laser it was a premier centauri rbm yag dental laser cleared for sale last month by the fda in the 97 the us company claimed to have been more than 2500 inquiries so this is if the picture you are seeing uh, uh, looks like a uh, uh, to be a uh, uh, hi-fi laser printer type of device it, it is the world's first heart tissue laser it was introduced by premier and they uh, start they intend to sell this laser for $40000 uh, unfortunately this system never became popular the company got bankrupt but still they are uh, like the milestone this is the milestone that on the june uh, in third, 1997 the uh, premier company introduced the first fda cleared use of a heart tissue laser so this was like until 19 so now 1997 is again if we talk it is more than 35 year when first heart tissue laser was used where are we now so after that we need to understand like so many lasers are there and now we have a cutting it laser like we we are using of lately so uh, i would like to uh, brief here Uh, the uh, laser which i am working it is a wood picker laser it's a small device compared to the old laser it is a portable device diode laser and it has got three wavelength 450 650 and 976 nanometer we will be talking about these lasers in detail later on these are uh, they are amazing device and compared to what we had in 1997 a device which was almost 100 kg of weight and uh, cannot shift from uh, even from one chair to uh, other chair we have something which can be which are so portable which can be carried away all over the uh, clinics like I, I, like i just told i have three clinic but uh, and i have couple of lasers but i prefer taking this laser wherever i'm working with me so this is like a latest laser what we have uh, currently so we have come a long way compared to uh, the first and the yag laser to rbm yag laser to current laser and even you know the prices are uh, also very competitive now the price of laser which was supposed to be 40000 us dollar in 1997 nowadays we have a laser which is available for around 4000 to 5000 us dollar and they are beautiful devices and we will be talking about this later on so how about uh, uh, lasers are classified now we are talking about laser dentistry in dental laser now you need to understand dental lasers we have two type of lasers we have surgical lasers and we have non surgical laser now surgical lasers are what surgical lasers are what which uh, are again broadly classified into hard tissue lasers and soft tissue lasers now when we talk about hard tissue laser uh, usually the rbm family are the hard tissue laser so uh, there are only two type of rbm laser rbm yag laser and rbm chromium ysgg lasers so they are the two hard tissue popular laser very recently few years back 4 5 years back a company known as sola sola they have introduced a co2 laser also solia sorry solia they have introduced a carbon dioxide laser also 9600 wavelength so uh, surgical laser again we have hard tissue laser and soft tissue laser hard tissue i just told they are either rbm family or they are carbon dioxide and then we have soft tissue lasers soft tissue laser what all we have we have diode lasers mini wavelength of diode lasers and we will be discussing this in more detail later on but uh, uh, 
for time being we just need to know the popular uh, diode lasers are near infrared except 450 nanometer wavelength what is 450 nanometer wavelength i will be discussing more into my next webinar where we will be discussing about different wavelength which wavelength to choose what is the ideal wavelength and all but for time being we need to understand that most of the diode lasers are near infrared means they are 700 to uh, 1200 nanometer wavelength then we also have ndag laser which was first laser to be ever introduced and we also have carbon dioxide lasers which are excellent uh, what you call surgical lasers so we have surgical lasers for heart tissue type and soft tissue types you need to understand if i have access to a heart tissue laser i can use them on soft tissue means heart tissue lasers are also known as all tissue laser means they can be used on soft tissue or they can also be used on heart tissue whereas a soft tissue laser can be used only on soft tissue not on the heart tissue <clears throat> so they are the surgical lasers then we also have non surgical lasers so what are the non surgical lasers we have diagnostic lasers like cavo has a diagnodent which is used to uh, diagnosis of caries or demineralized tissues and all and then we'll, we also have laser flow doppler matrix so many things are there uh, in non surgical we also have a separate category known as low level laser therapy now what is low level laser therapy low level laser therapy is uh, also known as bio stimulation or biomodulation here laser lights are used not in invasive uh, it, this is not a invasive technique but rather it is a non invasive technique and we are we, we are using laser lights for stimulation of uh, cells for stimulation of healing for uh, let's say uh, it is used widely in all stream of uh, medicines not only in dentistry so people are using in sports therapy people are using uh, low level laser therapy for hair for hair uh, growth uh, hair structures and people are also using lasers for uh, low level lasers for uh, even for like let's say uh, tmj problem tmd problems and all those in dentistry so many uses are there now Again, uh, we will talk more about this in my next uh, webinar, but uh, need to understand most of the dental lasers when we buy, they have a capability to provide low level laser therapy. They come with attachment or, you know, if you know the technique, you can always use, uh, you can always use uh, your normal laser, dental laser for biostimulation. Uh, the new, newer machine, they come with a dedicated tips also. So these are like the low level laser therapy. Otherwise you can buy dedicated low level lasers also. Besides this, you have miscellaneous lasers like uh, photo activated disinfection and laser curing light, which I will be discussing in uh, other seminars, other webinar later on, right? So what is laser? We have talked about laser use in common life. We have talked about laser in our dentistry. We have talked about laser in medicine. We have talked about laser in Defense also, but what is laser basically? So you need to know that lasers are light amplification stimulated by emission of radiation. This is the simple definition of laser. So basically lasers are also type of light, right? Lasers are also type of light. Now we have so many lights. We have a common light, we have sunlight and we have light where I'm right now working. So this is also type of light. So what is so different with this laser light with the common light? So there are few difference, three basic difference. I will talk not into the detail because uh, uh, we are here just for introduction part. So little bit of laser physics here. Laser, what are the different type of laser lights? So understanding laser radiation, like I just mentioned, laser is also type of light. So first feature of laser, it is monochromatic. One color means laser light will be of a single wavelength, very specific wavelength generated. What I mean by that? So you need to understand what is common light or sunlight. Sunlight is, we all know, are made up of seven different colors, right? 400 to 700 nanometer, that is visible wavelength. Uh, Vibzior, we all know, these are the seven basic colors. And then there are a combination of billions of colors are there with the combination of those seven. So it starts from 400 to 700. This is the visible wavelength. So this is like the normal light. Beside this, there are lights which are invisible. Now they can be infrared, they can be ultraviolet. Uh, anything below than 400 are ultraviolet and anything above 700 is infrared. So this is the like common light. What about laser lights? Like I just mentioned, they are monochromatic, very specific wavelength. So very specific wavelength means they can be 450 nanometer if they are blue in color. Okay, then we have near infrared. 
we have 810 we have 940 we have 980 we have 1064 so these four are diode laser wavelengths beside this 1064 is a wavelength for ndr also then we have heart issue 2600 to 2 3000 then we have got co2 also which wavelength is 9600 to 10600 but remember uh, only blue laser 450 wavelength is the visible is a surgical laser rest all are not visible to human light so that is the one difference between uh, laser light and the common light then they can be highly focused and directional coherent energy and can be focused to very small spot and those who are working with the laser they they know that when we are working with the laser they are so focused that you see the uh, guided beam light red color a dot a small dot uh, can be focused so that that is how we get lot of energy with just a, a using very less power they are very predictable means they are collimated they are focused and they are divergent so this is some property of laser radiation uh, uh, about the laser physics also we need to know what happen when a light hits the tissue so the same reaction when a light hits a normal tissue same thing happened when the laser light hits with the soft tissue or our uh, heart tissue uh, let me go more application of heart tissue uh, this let me skip this slide first of all so laser effect of the tissue we will go so uh, wherever laser light hits a tissue there can be four phenomena uh, i i simplified r a t s rats so laser light either they can get reflected they can get absorbed they can get transmitted or they can get scattered so these are the four phenomena which happens r a t s again so these are like uh, the basic uh, features of laser light which i am seeing uh, again it can get reflected it can get transmitted it can get scattered or it can get absorbed for surgery remember for surgery we need light to get absorbed if i'm doing a heart tissue it can it should get absorbed if i'm doing light tissue uh, 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 soft tissue application then also it need to get absorbed and how uh, what happen when they get absorbed and where they get absorbed i will be talking in next few slides so we'll go here uh, again next slide is so these are the chromophores what are chromophores chromophores are the tissue element that absorb laser light so for a heart tissue water and hydroxyapatite are the main chromophores means uh, whatever uh, if uh, uh, like uh, if i'm working with a heart tissue laser they will get absorbed by hydroxyapatite tissue and same way for a soft tissue hemoglobin melanin and uh, keratin and all are the some pigments where they these soft tissue gets absorbed soft tissue laser light gets absorbed what happens these are the chromophores like i told so chromophores basically they attract the laser light and when they attract this laser light what happens let us go through in these slides and uh, discuss about this so surgical dental laser exhibit exhibit tissue interaction that is primarily photothermal means light energy is changed into heat during absorption by the target tissue so what is happening the light is getting absorbed by this light the pigments are absorbing and they are they are creating a heat so what is happening when they are creating heat so you need to see the photothermal reaction produces a temperature rise in the target tissue and whenever there is a rise in temperature tissue we get uh, ablation of blast type things this phenomena goes like this ablation is also known as vaporization you can see here the light is getting absorbed by cell cell is getting expanded now you you we all know that cell contains majority of cell is fluid so whenever temperature is uh, whenever temperature is uh, increased whenever temperature is increased uh the water will like water uh, remains water we all know water remains water till 100 degree only whenever we increase the temperature more than 100 degree water becomes steam so cell expands so this is a normal cell light is coming here it is getting absorbed and you see here it is getting one once the uh, water is changing into steam it is getting expanded till it till it explodes that is how we are getting the surgery done or ablation done so this is something about laser light what is happening right so this is how it cuts will 
appear like so there are certain factors also which affect the uh, interaction of the laser with the biological tissues these factor i will be discussing more in the detail but we need to understand uh, those who have laser those who have access to the laser they will understand it better so these are the factor what wavelength i'm using which wavelength i'm using optical property of the target tissue power density uh, temporal characteristic of the beam energy like which uh, whether I'm using continuous mode or pulse delivery system, pulse rate or pulse duration, difference in method of energy transfer like uh, whether I'm working on contact mode or non-contact mode, uh, same way focused or non-focused beam. So there are many other parameters also. Now let us go to the clinical uh, scenario because uh, basics I think this is enough and now we'll go to clinical laser for all we are talking and we are uh, trying to introduce uh, laser for uh, dentistry for everyone. So need to understand rarely in dentistry does a clinical tool emerge with so many possibilities for treatment. When we, uh, we discuss the laser has got application in almost all the speciality. So let's say uh, what all we can do with the laser like I have already discussed laser has application in oral surgery, laser has application in prosthodontics, pedodontics, periodontics, orthodontics, endodontics and oral medicines. So how we use uh, before that these are some soft tissue uh, uh, indications of lasers. Uh, I've just told like laser aesthetic and surgery laser can be used in gingival. Uh, these, these, all these slides I will be sharing with a uh, woodpecker and you can always ask them for uh, the applications and all. So these these application what I'm, uh, I've noticed, I, I've uh, posted here, these all are FDA approved application. So we have got almost 40 for soft tissue laser FDA approved. There are some uh, indications which are still yet to be approved by FDA, but I have used laser successfully. Like diode laser, I can tell you the one application is for oral submucous treatment of oral submucous vibration, also treatment of depigmentation whenever I'm using the lasers, right? So these are, uh, besides this, there are uh, heart tissue applications also. So heart tissue application of uh, lasers are cavity preparation for composite, uh, for removal of old filling, for bone cutting, veneer preparation, veneer removal, photon induced photoacoustic streaming for endodontics and etching prior to bonded restoration. I will be sharing some slides just to get an idea and then later on we can be go in more details. Also for excess cavity preparation in endodontics. So these are like uh, heart tissue application. I have just mentioned soft tissue application before that. So almost uh, 70, 80 applications are FDA approved. We'll go one by one clinic. So uh, let's discuss some routine dental procedures. So as a general practitioner, what are the common thing we do? Like if a patient, uh, most of us, like those who are uh, into private practice, they will understand. So common patient comes either for the cleaning of the teeth. So that is oral uh, prophylaxis or they come for restoration uh, means filling or uh, they have a cavity preparation. Also, we are doing endodontic. We are doing extraction. Uh, we are patients are coming for hypersensitivity, uh, then uh, we are doing a lot of prosthetic work also, crown and bridges. Beside this, some speciality treatments we do uh, in general practicing, uh, uh, in practicing uh, our general practice also. So let's discuss something about those details. What are those details? So a speciality treatment is like TMJ problem, accelerated healing after extraction, for low level, accelerated integration of dental implants, accelerated bone remodeling and healing after bone grafting, treatment of tooth sensitivities and treatment of Ulceration. This is for the low level laser therapy. So we'll start with the treatment of dentin hypersensitivity. Uh, this is like first, uh, uh, like I mentioned, we'll go department wise and first department uh, uh, or first uh, speciality when a patient goes to a clinic is uh, diagnosis and treatment planning, which happens in oral medicine. And there they we, we treat for most common, uh, one of the most common problem is dentin hypersensitivity. <clears throat> You need to understand that the laser assisted treatment of dentin hypersensitivity is a good method to solve immediate and long term pain compared to conventional desensitizing topical agent for laser treatment. Although more expensive need to rapid result with less application time and more quickly for the patient, the laser uh, uh, produce better result compared to the other treatment process, uh, uh, other treatment modalities. Now you need to understand whenever I'm using a laser or any anything for dentin hypersensitivity, whether we are pre, uh, prescribing dentifrices, I mean toothpaste, or uh, we are applying topical uh, solutions for dentin hypersensitivity, whatever treatment we are doing, uh, until unless we are modifying the dentin tubule. Uh, 
uh, they are momentary they, they give momentary relief so you need to remove the offending cause also suppose what what i mean by this suppose there is cervical abrasion so you have to treat that also patient is coming with a super hypersensitivity with the severe pain and all you can use laser to control the pain immediate relief give immediate relief and later on you can go for uh, uh, prescribe or dentifrice and then recall the patient uh, in next few days for doing a restoration also so this is something about dental hypersensitivity let me show you some cases also this is the case of aptha sulcer we have treated with the laser aptha sulcer or herpetic uh, uh, lesions and all these are the most uh, uh, annoying condition because they are extremely painful and issue with the conventional treatment is whatever treatment modality we use they take time like if i'm treating an ulcer with a conventional procedure whether i'm applying topical uh, steroids or giving a systemic and multivitamins and all they take five to seven days to heal with the laser soft tissue diode laser i can treat the patient chair side it takes just five to ten minutes so the process uh, is called as laser bandage and uh, the, my, in my next th third third webinar it would, introducing laser for day to day practice i will be discussing in more detail about this for time being just remember laser i am typing here uh, in the chat box laser bandage this is the technique known as laser bandage uh, which we are doing for treatment of uh, ulcers so this is like immediate uh, on the right side you say you can see immediate post op this is a healing after a week, hardly any uh, signs and symptoms of uh, the tissue was there. You need to also know that the pain was relieved immediately chair side. So it just take 10 minutes to cure uh, herpes uh, lesions or ulcerative lesions and all. So this is something like laser use in oral medicine. Besides this, there are so many other applications. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time here to discuss all those things. Uh, so. Uh, let's go to the other so laser and uh, oral surgery <clears throat> again i can divide into a uh, heart tissue use and soft tissue if i have access to heart tissue i can use laser for cutting the bone for sectioning of tooth uh, for uh, even the modifying uh, removal of tori removal of bony any projections and all those things and uh, i have worked with certain lasers and i've uh, seen like i've got a decent a decent result for all these cases and all so this is for heart tissue uses but i'll focus more on soft tissue soft tissue uses i can use laser for treatment of pigmented lesions i can use for minor surgeries i can use for major surgeries also i can use laser for adjunct of your conventional surgery means you can use suppose if you're not very much confident of using laser with the uh, uh, for uh, some surgeries and all you can always use conventional surgery and then use laser for healing laser for coagulation laser for arrest of bleeding some slides i want to share you so this is a white pigmented lesion varicose Cast, uh, varicose and uh, here uh, I've used laser to remove uh, remember uh, lip is a high aesthetic zone very visible so you, we cannot take any chance and sutures and all uh, placing is not that easy so laser is always preferable in such lesions and all see here this is immediate post op and you can see hardly any tissues were there and very less bleeding again lip is a place where patient whenever opens the mouth there will be movement so control of bleeding is very important so i i prefer laser over a scalpel here when i'm doing working with these type of uh, lesions so this is like a white lesion same way uh, case of leukoplakia you can see how to remove uh, leukoplakia where i've used a laser to remove it it is a you can see again uh, i'm not sure if my pointer is visible to all of you, you see here absolutely bloodless field. And the best part, it was painless and it was without giving any anesthesia. So you can uh, perform these type of surgeries also, a white lesion, pigment lesion, and also dark lesions also like pigmented uh, gums and all, right? So this is something about uh, laser sensorial surgery. Let's talk something about laser and prosthodontic. Again, we have heart tissue application and soft tissue application. Heart tissue, if I have, I cannot prepare an ideal crown, but I can always use laser for veneer. And you see here, uh, this is a no prep preparation we have done for a case of full uh, for interior uh, upper interiors. And you notice here, these are the teeth in separation, uh, generalized atresion. We wanted to develop the smile. We have used thin ears here. And this is like, Instead of using a drill, I have just used laser for modification of the surface. So this is not by etching, but by using a heart tissue laser. And immediately we place the cemented this uh, these uh, veneers and 
you can see here post op immediate post op this is like a old case we are discussing now soft tissue when we talk we can uh, the one of one, one of the problem we come across with the soft tissue lasers are like flabby uh, sorry soft uh, with the dentures are uh, flabby ridge whenever these type of ridges are there uh, since they are flabby they give instability to a denture and patients are always irritated because of ill fitting denture so what you can do you can use laser for removal of all this flab and extra soft tissues something like this use laser to remove it and then wait for a week or so two week so you can see here instead of a flabby ridge which was giving an instability to the denture can come to a firm ridge where i can place uh, i can fabricate a denture and and can get a better satisfactory i can also use laser for vestibuloplasty now this is something i am doing off lately what what i mean by vestibuloplasty uh, it is very common in this part of the world that over uh, over a, uh, when a patient uses a denture for a long time the lower ridge uh, lower ridge as well as upper ridge they tend to resolve so in those cases what we do we can do a vestibuloplasty means i i do i use laser for surgery of uh, vestibular part to increase the depth of the cell Uh, a case of limited i can show here uh, 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 and i can give more detail in the my next uh, in my third lecture when we will be talking about day to day dentistry so you can use laser soft tissue laser for increasing uh, the vestibule also now laser used in periodontics so very common procedure are gingivectomy gingivoplasty gingival incision excision phrenectomy and phrenotomy is also a uh, treatment of periodontitis and periimplantitis this is important the treatment of periodontics uh, laser for phase 1 therapy uh, a company known as millennium laser it is based in uh, usa and they make a laser uh, ndr laser periolase they have patented a protocol known as lanap that is laser assisted new attachment procedure means they they have used laser for treatment of periodontitis severe cases of periodontitis where, where uh, the patient has grade 2 to grade 3 mobility pocket depth of 8 to 10 mm or maybe more and there there they have used laser for treatment of those cases and they have uh, found amazing result there are enough articles available online and again like uh, my other webinar uh, webinar we will be discussing about these procedure in detail so like you can use laser for those type of treatment also very importantly uh, you need to understand that the biggest dental market upcoming market is uh, for dental implant uh, that is like they are predicting by year 2 to 2026 the implant market is going to reach more than 8 billion so uh, more than 8 billion implant market will be by the year 26 and that is only in the usa all over the world uh, they are predicting it can be more than 20 billion dollar us dollars uh, what data currently says whatever implant treatment we are doing over a period of uh, five year there will be failure in 15 to 20% cases so 20% of implant tend to fail over a period of 1 uh, uh, to 5 year in the, in five year protocol why they fail they fail because of a common i mean most common cause uh, if if we exclude uh, about the trauma from occlusion or ill fitting or, or bad processes or something like that the commonest cause for implant failure are periimplantitis and i'm uh, again i'm really excited to say that among the certain protocol to treat a periimplantitis uh, besides teflon tips and uh, using pad uh, a laser is one of the protocol which is uh, uh, evidence based and which has got sufficient evidence to treat periimplantitis so that is another uh, uh, beauty of a soft tissue laser which can be used on treating periimplantitis and uh, again like in my third webinar i will be talking more into detail where we will be discussing about clinical cases so this is something about laser in surgery uh, like i just mentioned i can do uh, vestibuloplasty here so this is a, a local vestibuloplasty patient had a, a very high uh, labial frenum attachment or lower uh, lower anterior and you can notice uh, generalized uh, sorry localized uh, soft tissue uh, loss a localized recession along with the deposit so what we did here we did a scaling thorough scaling and then we did a vestibuloplasty to release the tension and a patient was happy within uh, within a, a one or two month we saw 
not not total covering of the soft tissue but 2 mm almost 1.5 to 2 mm soft tissue was back so this is like for the localized same thing uh, in the denture you can do for uh, all around the alveolar uh, all around the buccal space and all to increase the uh, depth of the sulcus also laser can be used in pediatric dentistry this is the one book which is uh, very good if somebody wants to go in more details so what are the application exposures of unerupted crown i can use for phrenectomy phrenotomy pulp capping and also pulpotomy and pulpectomy certain cases i can show you here uh, these are the x rays where i have used laser for uh, pulpotomy and pulpectomy uh, some more cases and uh, again like in my next issue i will be using in more detail uh, uh, sorry my next webinar uh, i will be using more detail uh, introduction of all these procedures what about laser in orthodontics we have got hard tissue application and soft tissue applications so what are the soft tissue application this is like one case uh, i would appreciate uh, if you all notice here so like these are the cases where pa uh, patients canines or some teeth are not erupted properly so conventionally what we would have done we would have done uh, gingivectomy and recall the patient after 3 uh, 4 uh, days or 5 days after the healing took place the bracket with the laser you notice here same setting we can uh, do the uh, we can do the gingivoplasty or gingivectomy and same setting we can place the bracket so lesser number of patients recall you can see here some more cases you can see here unerupted tooth and uh, with the laser we expose the tooth and same setting we can place the bracket if required or even if the tooth is not coming out i can use laser for uh, accelerating the eruption pattern all right so uh, this is another case impacted lower canine where we expose the teeth and then we place the bracket to pull the teeth up and you can see here uh, same sitting we uh, we did all the procedures so laser in oral pathology also we we'll like to mention so i can always take a specimen of a growth or a tissue and send it to lab for diagnosis we have done couple of cases the only uh, important point you need to mention here let them interpret it away from the excision side so that uh, whenever they are taking uh, judging the sample see wherever uh, there is laser excision there may be some amount of charring or loss of blood and necrosis so let them interpret it so that we don't get any confusing uh, interpretation or result so this is something about uh, laser in oral pathology also in community like very very popular especially for this part of the world one disease very uh, common so very common disease is oral submucous fibrosis i have used laser for treatment of oral submucous fibrosis also you can see here this is like the case how we do fibrotomy and we have got some very good result uh, almost uh, 4 to 5 mm to 5 mm to up to 15 mm chair side mouth opening and i'm open if somebody wants to learn that technique i'm open and we will be sharing this more into the detail so this is like something uh, introduction since this is just an introduction so i have just shared some of my cases and some of my uh, work uh, along with some cases of my friends also to uh, just to show like how we can use laser in day to day practice we will be talking more into the detail as as the uh, we have got some amazing topics like uh, myth versus reality what are the different myth associated with the lasers we have got a very good uh, topic of war of wavelength because of lately so many new wavelengths have come that many of my friends are confused which laser to buy so we will be talking that also in more detail also the last part will be uh, practice management whenever you we spend money on uh, any device we would like to get a return on the investment so laser is something like we, i would appreciate uh, to all of you to attend that lecture also where i have discussed my way of practice management with uh, dental lasers and how i am using it day to day knowledge so if you need to read something more further there is a book uh, amazing book uh, laser dentistry current concept it is by springer available on amazon and other uh, websites and i have contributed the first chapter here uh, laser uh, in dentistry where to begin uh, whereas there are many other um, renowned authors they have contributed in this particular book so you are welcome to uh, discuss about this also uh, about this so uh, i think almost we are over of time so thank you all uh, thank you woodpecker again and i'm open to q and answer i mean question and answer session uh, any questions any doubt please ask uh, lucy i think uh, we can go to question and answer session now
थैंक यू अगेन ऑल ऑफ यू Sir, after OSFF surgery, post-operative scar formation is major issue. Can to give assurance to patient without it by using laser? Can we give assurance to patient about it by using laser? Okay, uh, Doctor Shilpa. So uh, this is a very common and very interesting question. Now, uh, what we are doing with the laser? You need to understand. We are uh, with the laser. We are doing a fibrotomy. So fibrotomy, even the conventional method, we give. whenever we give a fibrotomy conventional i mean i'm not a, a expert of um, oral, uh, oral surgery so uh, but i do have uh, some uh, renowned uh, friend and some very close friend who have guided me over the period of time so whenever we are doing a surgery with the scalpel also we never give a just a, 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 a just a thin line of fibrotomy we used to uh, do a blunt dissection by using i mean we break the fiber blunt dissection means we we uh, what we do we create a space between the uh, surgical site so that they don't get approximate together right so we give a blunt dis a blunt dissection so even with the laser when i'm using uh, first of all i suggest using a thick tip like uh, uh, i'm not going into the detail laser comes with a different tip size 300 micron 250 micron 400 micron so like 330 micron so many sizes are there so always go for a thick tip so that and also give multiple multiple now instead of going into one line uh, like okay instead of going into one straight line give multiple slice so that you are getting you are covering more area they don't get approximate together another important aspect in oral submucous fibrosis is post op instruction physiotherapy is very important physiotherapy has to go for at least physiotherapy has to go for at least 6 month to 1 year depending on patient uh unfortunately india patient recall is not very very common and they don't come usually but if possible try to recall patient after 15 days then again after a month and then for uh, what you call uh, just for maintenance to see 3 month and 6 month so physiotherapy is very important give a blunt dissection and you can uh, offletly uh, in few cases i have used collagen also as a dressing and i've got decent result so uh, i'm um, lucky enough to guide a uh, pg thesis on this so i can share more knowledge if you are interested uh, you have my uh, both contacts and we can talk about this later on thank you shilpa any more questions in root canal treatment if we are using laser can it damage enamel brittleness no uh first of all uh in root canal when i'm going there are only cementum not not in our mel so i'm inside the root canal so when i'm inside the root canal uh, no chance of coming into uh, enamel enamel is the outer coverage only on the crown uh, lower it is cementum or dentin right so we are into dentin and that part into dentin basically so uh, when we are into dentin uh, there the two way to use uh, uh, your diode laser uh, one is the wet environment another one is dry environment so we are using at the uh, wattage of 1 watt 1 watt has 1 watt has no effect on the heart tissue anyway a soft tissue has got soft tissue laser has got no effect at all on a heart tissue so no don't worry about it and i will be discussing definitely again in the root canal treatment we will be discussing in my next web series in full mouth implant case which is the best option either mid loading or wait for 3 months okay i'm not expert of implant here so that is like case to case uh, uh, depend depend upon case to case what what my understanding is like uh, i am endodontist basically so it is my what my understanding is if we have a primary stability of more than 35 newton that is what my understanding says we can do immediate loading uh immediate loading so it is totally uh, uh, judgment of a clinician who is doing the case Uh, in full mouth implant case whether they have to load it immediately or wait for 3 month depending upon the bone situation what type of bone they are working and what is the immediate i mean uh, talk they have achieved i can talk about preimplantitis yes if there is a preimplantitis we can 101% correct with lasers and i, I would love to share my uh, correction of preimplantitis in my next presentation <laughs> Uh, 
Do we have any more questions, Lucy? Uh, any more questions, Lucy? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Uh, thank you again for joining me. And we had some uh, issues initially, but hopefully next series we will be solving uh, those also. And I will be playing a lot of videos. Thank you again joining. And thank you, Woodpecker, for giving platform. Can I leave?